Good evening, this is VK4 Steve, uh, VK4 SJH Steve again, continuing on with the uh, foundation slide lectures. Section 6 Propagation. Radio waves, they are electromagnetic waves. You've, we've talked about that before. There's an electric field component and a magnetic field component. They're perpendicular to each other. Uh, that's why they call it the electromagnetic wave, sometimes referred to as the EM wave. How these waves travel from the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna, it's called propagation. So with your transceiver, you've got your transceiver connected via your transmission line to your antenna. Um, the electrical signals are converted to an e electromagnetic wave in the antenna. That electromagnetic wave then propagates by some means to the receiving antenna. Sometimes the receiving antenna is within line of sight. Sometimes it's on the other side of the world. Uh, we're going to learn how these signals propagate around the world. How these uh, waves travel from the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna is called propagation. Radio waves travel in a straight line, although they can be refracted, reflected, or diffracted. Further, the radio wave gets from the transmitting antenna, the weaker it becomes. That may be a question you get asked in the, in the foundation theory exam. Um, so the rule is, the further away, the weaker it gets. Just think of a light bulb, shining light bulb. When you're close to the light bulb, it's strong. If you walk away from the light bulb, the further you, you get away from it, the weaker that light gets. Anytime a radio wave travels through anything other than free space, it will travel slower and lose strength. So radio waves do travel through walls and buildings. Some walls absorb more energy of the radio wave than others. Uh, like a steel building will absorb more radio waves, uh, but they do get absorbed and they become weaker. There's a thing called the ionosphere. Looking at this diagram here, this is the ground. The sun's uh, the height of the ionospheric layers is approximate. These heights are approximate. They're not exactly the same height, they, and the heights do vary. The sun's rays ionizes charged particles in the air. So they, that's why they call it the ionosphere, because it's the ionization of the air particles. When radio wave hits the ionosphere, they can be bent back towards Earth. This bending is dependent upon its density and the frequency of operation. If you look at this graph here, there's, there's several layers, the D, E, F1 and F2. Now some layers appear during the daytime, some only appear at night time. But if you look at the frequencies, that's a 7 megahertz signal, 14 megahertz, and 144 megahertz doesn't get refracted at all. So basically, propagation around the world is due to the ionosphere, the radio waves being um, bent through the ionosphere. And so a signal comes up, hits, gets refracted by the ionosphere, hits the ground, and it even may bounce back up again. So you may have multiple hops around the world. And that frequency varies and it depends upon what layers are available during the day. The ionosphere refracts the radio waves and that's very important to remember because it doesn't reflect it, it refracts it. The amount of refraction is dependent upon these factors, the sunspot activity, the time of day and the season. The ionosphere is reliant on the ultraviolet radiation from the sun. So it's the ultraviolet radiation that causes the ionosphere to happen. Sun, the sun generates sunspots and it's an 11 year cycle. So a sunspot cycle is an 11 year, so it goes to a maximum, then it goes down to a minimum, and then back up to a maximum again 11 years later. So what you find is HF propagation at the peak of the sunspot cycle increases rapidly and you can make HF contacts around the world very easily. A signal travelling from the transmitter to the receiver via two paths can cause multipath fading. So if you look at this, you're transmitting an antenna and there's your receiver here. You have a ground wave and a sky wave uh, via the ionosphere. So these two signals can add up and either increase the signal strength or decrease it 
or cause fading. So this is a graph, a diagram you will be shown in the exam. So this is called a sky wave. And when it refracts back to the first hop, that's a single hop. Now, of course, it can, it can be reflected back off the ground and continue on again, but it'll be a lot weaker and go around the world. This distance across here is called the skip distance, and that's the distance between the transmitting antenna when the, and the wave first reaches back to the ground. This part here is referred to as the ground wave. So you need to become familiar with this diagram. This is the ground wave. And this is the skip zone. So you're in the skip zone here. Now, in actual fact, you can be have a signal here, a receiver here, where this just here, and you won't pick anything up because you you're in the skip zone. Okay. A signal traveling from the transmitter to the receiver via two paths can cause multi-pass fading. Selective fading occurs when the frequency components that make up the signal are refracted by different amounts, and that can cause distortion. I don't know if you've ever listened to shortwave radio. A lot of people don't anymore, but it used to be very popular in the older days. Uh, you hear this distortion of the signal. It's due to multipath fading. Now that's on HF, but on VHF and UHF and frequencies above UHF are dependent upon almost clear line of sight path from the transmitter to the receiver. The ionosphere will not refract VHF or UHF signals very much. VHF and UHF are generally obstructed by hills and other large obstacles. So we have what we call repeaters on the on the hills. Our amateur repeaters, we've got VHF repeaters and UHF repeaters. And that's the reason why we put them on the hill, because you've got much more line of sight, you can see further. So if we had two stations working together from one car to another car, they would only have a range of about 12 to 15, 20 kilometer range. But if you put a repeater on top of the hill and transmit through the repeater, because the repeater is on top of the hill, it goes a lot further. But UHF and VHF signals can be bent or diffracted over some obstacles. It's called diffraction. And you also can have temperature changes in the troposphere that results in ducts that cause VHF and UHF signals to propagate it over long distances. Generally speaking, it's line of sight, short distances, but if you have this, what they call tropospheric ducting, the VHF signal and UHF signal can travel a long way. So there's two diagrams here. We've got a transmitter and a receiver. The waves, generally speaking, travel in a straight line, but if they hit the top of a hill or a building, they'll get diffracted. And this is why sometimes you can pick up signals on the other side of a hill. If you're here, if you're located here, you might not pick up anything at all because you don't pick up any signal. You can't diffract enough to get a received signal there. Below is shown the example of tropospheric ducting on VHF and UHF radio waves. So basically, there's um, two layers of cold air and a warm air layer here. And the wave gets trapped in between these two layers. And it can go thousands of kilometers on VHF uh, sometimes. In the old days, we used to have a television station called Channel O, which is on 50 megahertz, which was on one of our six meter amateur bands for the standard and the advanced people. And sometimes we'd be picking up Channel O in Melbourne uh, and would override the Channel O in Brisbane. But now they've moved Channel O to Channel 10, we don't have that problem anymore. So generally that ducting a proper tropospheric ducting occurs in the summer months, generally speaking. So here's some questions that you will get asked by uh, for the theory. A radio wave is radiated from the transmitter to become stronger, weaker, ionized, or ducted. Well the answer is it becomes weaker. Long distance HF propagation is the result of so HF propagation, that's the key word, HF. Now, if it was VHF or UHF, it would be tropospheric ducting. But because the, the key word there is HF, it's uh, ionospheric refraction. VHF and UHF signals can be extracted by basically large obstacles. Is the answer there. So sometimes on your repeater, you're working through the repeater, 
from your car and a big bus comes beside you, you will lose. You can lose the repeater because the bus can shield you from the repeater. That concludes section six. The next section is section seven. Stay tuned. This is VK4SJH Steve Howarth.